I am looking for some of the retro and vintage things that I sold this weekend. This one's called Alfred Hitchcock's Ghostly Gallery, and it is 11 spooky stories for young readers. It's from the 1960s, and what it is, uh, first of all, the illustrations in it are by Fred Banbury, and it is a collection of different stories by different authors. So Alfred Hitchcock just writes like an intro to it, and then the rest of them are just short stories that also have like two-tone illustration in them written by different mystery and suspense authors. And each one of them has like a little illustration right there. I thought it was pretty nifty. Uh, I used to read some of these when I was younger, but uh, I mean, clearly not this one, it's from the 60s. Next up is another one of the paper prints and paper ephemera, I guess is what they call it, that I have. And this one is a headshot of George Jones and Nancy Jones from, I don't know what year it's from. It doesn't say, but yeah. It's a picture of George Jones. I also got this vintage illustrated children's book that someone ordered, Jokes and Riddles. So the book, it's in fair condition. It's from 1967 because I see that written here. Although it says 1963 too. And inside are different jokes that have like, what now looks like clip art, but this was actually like an artist back then and it was drawn with the different jokes and riddles. You got jokes on one side and riddles on the other. And then this totally looks like clip art, like something you would go, I need to find an illustrated drawing. And when you search for it, this is what would be available. Although I think it's super cool. But yeah, jokes and riddles. Then I got this vintage Sesame Street illustrated children's book that not only features one of the more unused characters, obscure characters, no, I guess he's not obscure, but it's Sherlock Hemlock, who's like the detective guy but on top of it, it's in German. So this is a German version of a Sesame Street book. Ich hab's, denn ich bin Sherlock Holmes Book, der größte Detektiv der Welt. I had originally looked up what the title meant when I listed it, but I don't remember off the top of my head now. But yeah, the entire thing is in German. There's Big Bird, Sherlock Hemlock, and I want to say they're solving mysteries. I don't know. I don't even know who the artist is because I don't know where to read for it. And that's from 1973. So, Sherlock Hemlock. Now picking into the doll pile right here. We have, ring, Sonic the Hedgehog. So this is just a Sonic the Hedgehog doll. The tag got ripped off, not sure what the year is, but still pretty cool. I mean, they still make Sonic the Hedgehog, but I know that Sonic the original is from the 90s. So it's retro, right? It's like watching him go across the street. And then another illustrated children's book, The Hair Book. This one is a, I can, a beginner I can read it book that's by one of my favorite illustrators, Roy McKee, or Roy McKay. I don't know how quite to pronounce that. And in this one, it's like they just said, here, make some interesting drawings and give them weird hair and we'll write a story about it. And that's what it's about. It's about different types of hairstyles and it refers to animals and people and all kinds of stuff but I'm always a fan of the Roy McKee books. Then a book that's from a series of little books from, I wanna say the 80s, maybe the 70s. So these books were by Roger Hargreaves. Oh, there it is, 1981. And this one is about Little Tiny, who's a tiny little thing, tiny little ball, and it escapes one day and goes out into the world. And then a big square finds her. There was a whole series of them. On the back here, here's a bunch of them. They kind of remind me of those, like the Kool-Aid competitor things. They were like the Goofy something or others, Goofy Fruits. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Sugar Sweet and Funny Face comes in a two-quart size. That's one quart more, and that's a lot when it's hot. There you go. Little Miss Tiny. And I have a set of these glasses. Oh, the glasses always reflect. And they are from a Snoopy series of glasses that were put out called Camp Snoopy Collection. And it features them camping in different situations. And this one is Snoopy camping. And it's got Woodstock 
blaring the horn and they've got little tents in the trees. This one's from 1965 from McDonald's. And as far as games go, I have Perfection, which is the game with a timer. You put the shapes in and it clicks and clicks and clicks and you get all nervous trying to finish it and then it blows up in your face and you get angry. Tons of fun. So I've found a few of these, but the problem is, is most of them don't work. And this one does. Like what'll happen is either the timer doesn't work or it doesn't pop up, but this one is fully functioning. So I was super happy when we figured that one worked. Then another illustrated children's book, A Fish Out of Water. And this one is by Helen Palmer and illustrated by P.D. Eastman. This is the second of my favorite illustrators for these series of books. This one, of course, is the story of a boy who gets a fish as a pet and then is told kind of like in the Gremlins, you must do this and doesn't explain why. They just go, it's very important to only do this. Don't overfeed it and then don't put it in larger stuff, so things like that. And the fish gets bigger and bigger and this is what happens. And then at the very end, you know, you got the cops coming for it and all of a sudden it's like a nightmare before Christmas sort of situation where everybody in town is calling about it. A fish out of water, boom. The next one I had to get up on a chair and go on the top shelf for. And it is a cassette and book set, a read along Mary Poppins from Walt Disney. So it's a book and cassette tape version, not the record version of Mary Poppins. And it involves illustrations of the characters from Mary Poppins. And the best part is, is they tried to make them look realistic to the characters. This one almost kind of looks like, what's that though? The, like the witches of Eastwick one or something. I don't know. You got all of them floating in there. And then on the cassette, of course, that goes along with it. And you get the read along with it and chime and all that kind of stuff. Always fun when the cassette actually comes along with it. Usually these are two books because there's side A, side B. But this one's just the Mary Poppins one. The last one is this large illustrated version of The Night Before Christmas. And this is a reprint of one that was smaller and they made it a larger version. So this reprint was done in 1977 from the original one that was 1949. And of course it tells the story of the night before Christmas. And it's huge. So that's the stuff that I have going out today.